Hello, and you're listening, watching, and enjoying Where My Pro Is At with Kitten Features and Ken. Hey. Hey. So this week we are discussing one of our community submissions. Um, it is Jay Kristoff, I think that's the name of the author. Mm -hmm. Jay Kristoff's um, kind of Mad Max themed uh, Twilight-esque <laughs> novel, <laughs> Lifelike. Um, now this was a submission by one of our absolutely fantastic um, uh, community members, Beck. Beck, thank you so much for uh, encouraging us to expand our horizons and you know, kind of do a, a different genre than we normally would do. Really appreciate that and um, it, the thing is, this is the kind of book we would never have chosen ourselves, which is a good thing. And like you said, it's, a, it's good that we're expanding horizons. So thank, thank you so much for Absolutely. that, guys. We yeah. really do appreciate that. And before we get into this review, I just want to say also that uh, this book is very well reviewed on Goodreads. Uh, it seems to be a very popular option. I can see why Beck wanted us to read this and enjoy this. Unfortunately, I was not a fan. I can see how someone would like this book. But for me, as soon as the main character was called Riot Girl with two R's, I just wanted to I, I, I delete <laughs> me from Earth, please. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, it, it's always kind of awkward because, like, when you're when you're doing a review or you know, like, um, I do this to my, my my friend all the time. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. You have to try this, and then she's like. What? <laughs> so I've never really enjoyed robots, and uh, I think that means that I came into this book thinking, you know, I, I, I was hesitant to like it in the first place, which may have contributed to the, to the fact that I, I didn't really enjoy this book. Um, I gave this book two stars in Goodreads, um, and that was because I recognized that it is a coherent storyline, and the characters are fairly interesting as a concept. And the entire storyline, in theory, is good. I feel like the writing wasn't very good. I don't feel like it was, you know, for a, a, for a myriad of reasons, I have to say, I did not particularly enjoy the writing. I have to say that the, the J. Christoph can come up with a really interesting concept. The world is fascinating. I think the themes are interesting mm -hmm. to be explored. I think that the characters had potential, and I like the, the, the naming basis of the lifelike robot people, the androids. I thought that was really interesting as well, the sort of... Oh, for the angels. Yeah, the sort of... Oh, yeah. I kind of... Okay, there was... You know, let's, let, I want to talk about what I really liked about this book, actually. Sure. There's a couple points that I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the kind of like there's a lot of humor in this book most of the humor did not land for me but sometimes it really did land and mm. I was like oh that that's quite funny like with what you were saying about all the the androids being named after angels and uh, I think it was one of the scientists who was talking to Anna slash riot girl slash Eve's father and I was like could you have even a bigger of a god complex because he's yeah. always kind of creating them like I get quite that was pretty good like there's a like there was moments of brilliance in this book mm -hmm. um, I also would really like when I was reading it, it felt very cinematic. Like I felt like I could envision these kind of like battles happening and stuff like that. Unfortunately, in a, even in a TV show or a movie, I would be like, I'm not into this. I, I'm just, I'm not a big Transformers kind of like, you know, yeah. e <sighs> unpopular opinion. The only Avengers films I've ever really enjoyed are Gardens of the Galaxy and like Endgame, but I'm not really big on the whole like smash em up kind of thing. And you have to say that I have to say that a lot of the scenes in this book are are pretty much either action packed or emotional, mm -hmm. and those seem to be the only two two things that. I, and I, and the emotional side of stuff, it felt very YA for a young adult, which is fine. I mean that stuff's important, and it, that genre exists for a reason. People enjoy it, both young adults, teenagers, and I'd say adults growing up later on actually enjoy it. and for example I'm reading the Sabriel series right now mm -hmm. which is a YA series and I'm really enjoying it um, but I feel like there's a way of handling these sort of immature emotions that the characters have in a way that's still interesting to the reader um, I, I understand that YA books still need to go a little bit more, more in depth with these emotions um, than, than it was standard in other books but still I think there's a, an, artist, a, an, an artful way of doing that um, and what you're saying with the, the cinematic action side of things yeah the, the rest of the book was like, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this got picked up actually for a movie or oh yeah a absolutely show. it's got a huge following online it's got a lot of people who love this book which made me feel a little bit like I, w I have to be honest I wasn't looking 
looking forward to giving this review because we love Beck so much and we really enjoy like you know having community feedback and it's always kind of a bit difficult to be like this thing that you love not into it you know yeah it is difficult so um i just want to say that you know we are in the minority we are absolutely in the minority this book is jay kristoff is, is apparently is very well known he's he's got a huge following um and apparently a lot of his other books as well are very very well written i just and i could see the structure for a really good interesting story and like was there it just felt a bit too cliche for me um, I, I felt like the main character, oh my god, what a Mary Sue. Is oh. there anything she couldn't do? I Is there, she was perfect. I hesitate to say the, the, the term Mary, Mary Sue because I feel like there's a sexist implication whenever a dude says that, right? Because it, I think... Because Michael me, Sue. Well, right, but the point is that men will often see a, a woman character who is, a, you know, a strong woman character as being a Mary Sue just because they're a strong woman character. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm always hesitant to say it. So the fact that you said that makes me feel a lot better because I had the exact same impression. No, um, I, it didn't feel like I couldn't. The thing for me is I need a flawed character. I need someone that is like, oh, okay, you also stay in your PJs till three o'clock in the afternoon and sometimes only eat Twizzlers. Like, you know, I need someone who who's not so great at everything they do it makes you feel but i don't I don't yeah. know why we're like that when we read books. Like, why? Well, it's because it's more realistic, isn't it? You want a character who's who's got some realism to them. You um, see yourself in that character, and it makes it more immersive. Or not even yourself, but you just see them as a fellow human being. And yeah. I, I, and and I get it, lifelike. So you could argue that they don't have to be technically right. But let's not go down that road. Um, I would say that. Okay, let's talk about the traits that make this character a Mary Sue. She was a crack shot with a rifle. Fair enough. That's fine. Some people are crack shots with a rifle. She's an engineering whiz. After one year with her grandpa. One year. Grandpa. One year. And then she can do robotics? R really? Ro robotics. Like there are people with like 40, 50 years experience right now who can't do robotics to that level that, that they're, that they're doing. Like that's, that's crazy, right? And I'm um, fine, sci-fi, extend your reality, extend, but still, that's a big skill for uh, the 17-year-old. I mean, it would have been fine if that was the only, like, that's her yeah. skill. That is her, you know, but you can't have that. And maybe, okay, maybe she's also good at rifle, but does she have to be beautiful, she's also, plucky? Like she's extremely this? sociable to the point where people around her are willing to die for her. Her best friend, her robot companion, who... To be fair, is forced to through slavery, um, and also uh, Ezekiel and her grandpa, all of whom are willing to die for this for her, but she doesn't seem particularly willing to do for them. She's got her own stuff going on that she's more concerned about, um, and so that's a little that's a little crazy. I mean, like I don't think like, the number of people that we can list who would die for ourselves usually are partner and parents. That's pretty much it, usually. Uh, like, I think most people, would, uh, like, we, we, if you had to write out a list, most people would average on those. Might extend to best friend occasionally, or random child on street if I'm old, right? That kind of thing. Um, or maybe a numbers game. But this seemed a little bit, that was quite excessive, along with the other stuff. So, uh, sociable, crack shot, engineer. She has inbuilt combat augmentations through her chip, as, as we're first told in the, in the early on the book. It turns out it's just... She's a lifelike, yeah, right? She's a robot, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, she's still very, very, very good at combat, which is another crazy thing for a 17-year-old to be. She was also very good at controlling mechs in an arena to do combat. So not just the robotics where you, you know, create the machinery and repair and stuff, but actually actively controlling them. Yeah. That's another big skill that's a, you know, huh. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, like, it just, it just, it felt... I know it felt hard to kind of sympathize with her and empathize with the character because and it kind of takes all the drama out of the situation because you're like well of course she's gonna she's gonna you know succeed um or are you being distracted by pudgy he dogs? is very cute he is very cute he's been staring <laughs> he's staring with this whole time he's just looking at he's got kind of glassy eyes because he's just so cozy <laughs> the broody lady bird oh no oh no he's a good boy <laughs> so cute. Um, so let's talk about some of the other characters. Mm -hmm. So um, 
Her best friend, Lemon Fresh. Lemon Fresh, yeah. So, I, I, I gotta I like say... Lemon I, Fresh, uh, probably one of the more likable characters. I agree with book. this. Yeah. Um, the one thing I really liked about Lemon Fresh's character was that she turned out to be the one with the mental ability to take down robotics and electronics. I thought that was great because it took away a main... Another unnecessary win for the main character who didn't need another power right uh, which was good in itself but also because main characters are very frequently ignored uh, sorry, best friend characters and like friends and books and sidekicks, and sidekicks yeah. are often ignored and just there to help out um, but she actually seemed to have a bit of her own storyline which I which I appreciate in her own growth mm-hmm. um, so I, I kind of enjoyed that she was a, had a bit more depth to her than I think the other characters mm-hmm. did what did you think about Lemon Fresh? I, I like Lemon Fresh. I think she was, you know, like I said, she's probably one of the more likable characters. Um, I It kind of brings me to my second point, though. She had a lot of slang that just made me want to gouge my eyes out. Um, I really like it when it's well done. Like uh, Clockwork Orange. I remember reading the first page of that book and being like, I don't know what's going on. Is this English? What is this? And you know, you kind of get into this cadence of this world and it completely, it's such an interesting way to add texture and depth and dimension to your world and to your story. You know, this kind of like language uh, slang, but this like fizzy, trucer, it just, it was like the Riot Girl thing. It, it just, it really took me out of the story every time. I, I cringed. So much. So, uh, the way I put my Goodreads review, and I think it was touching on this as well, is um, I felt like the author repeatedly, like, I felt like every single piece of conversation that occurred was copy pasted from similar storylines that exist out there. But I'm not saying it's literally plagiarism, that's not my point. Mm-hmm. My point is that I feel like it was entirely based on standard idioms that are within the English language, standard phrases within the English language. It doesn't feel like the author actually let the characters think of their own phrases and, 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 and statements. It was all based on like extremely base standard stuff you hear in English all the time, which is boring. Um, and then try to fix that by adding in the slang. And it felt and that irritated also me. whenever the slang happened, it felt like it was purposely that scene was purposely written so they could say that slang word and be kind of like, oh, look at us, look, look at this, you know. Like having one Isn't word would be busy? cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like having one word would be cool between fr- yeah. best friends. I yeah. get that, but trying to do their own little language, it got a little irritating pretty quickly. It, you know, and then the names of people. Like I, I kind of like this. I love this idea actually of in the future where you know, people are kind of like have these names that they would have online, you know, like I I, I like that idea. That's such a cool idea, but it just drove me bonkers. Right, girl with two R's. I'm going to keep going on and on about this. No, 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 no. Strong female characters. And like I said, in the YA kind of genre, like uh, with Katniss and Bella and, and the Divergent, lady, the girl of the Divergent. I think that's a really important thing. I love to see it. Um, You know, I have younger sisters and they love books like this. In fact, I actually think I might recommend this to a few of my younger sisters. I think they would really enjoy it. It is definitely more their kind of wheelhouse. They Mm -hmm. love this kind of like post-apocalyptic, you know, but with a love triangle thrown in there kind of thing. Like This is right up their alley. Uh, sorry, not love triangle, but a l- little romance subplot between. Okay. Yeah, I would recommend this story to my sisters. It's exactly something that they would absolutely love and enjoy. This kind of post-apocalyptic uh, with a with a romance, you know, uh, heavy on the romance. And what I was like, what what the point I'm trying to get at is that I think it's so important for girls, younger women especially, to read these stories and to grow up with these stories. And yeah, us as adults, I agree with that. we might be like, oh, this is a bit cringy. But for them, it's so important. It's so important to see a, a, a girl here, her, heroine who is who can shoot a rifle and do engineering and do all this awesome stuff. Um, I think I'm too jaded. <laughs> I'm too cynical and too just like crumbled by the world to really kind of in, in, enjoy that um, and enjoy YA. I, I, I don't like any YA. I think Ella Enchanted is probably the only YA I've ever really truly enjoyed. No, it's surprising. Yeah. Uh, I, I like quite a lot of YA because I, I read a lot of books in my teenage years that were YA and since then I've 
you know, kids enjoying them. See, I never really read a lot of YA growing up. It was not to be like, oh God, see, now I'm doing the Mary Sue thing. But I, I when I, I, the books I used to read because I grew up quite poor and I, I couldn't get access to a lot of books unless they were at our very small country library. So they would be like classic literature. Yeah. And I had to kind of teach myself that way. I never got to read like the fun, cool, hip, like sure. things so it grew up a bit different yeah that, that's understandable um so yeah i think the the uh female characters are strong I, I don't i still wouldn't personally recommend this book to people though even in that age group because i just don't think it's very well written i right. I, I still don't think that people in that age group would enjoy it i think i think one of my sisters would okay enjoy well it. that's that's all it also depends she on what also kind of book recommended you enjoy. a book that was very similar to this Except it was about like they got stuck in a maze or something. It wasn't Maze Runner. It wasn't Maze Runner. It was like a different Maze Runner kind of thing. Okay. And they had a girl, and it was good. I enjoyed it. It was all right, but like again, love triangle. Love triangle. F female protagonist who is just so freaking perfect. If she just you know was like wasn't living in this horrible dystopian hellscape. Yeah. Um, so I think I think she would. I think Sky would really enjoy this. Actually. Okay. Um, let's talk about Ezekiel as well. He is a character that I was looking forward to talking about because he is the blandest character in this entire book, which is surprising because he has quite a lot of presence. Um, so he is first of all found in a scrap heap. Effectively, he falls from the sky and is broken, and they try to take him for parts. Mm -hmm. um, they realize because they realize he's very valuable because of the type of thing that he is in this world, the lifelike. Um, they take him back to the to the grandpa's place and try to take him apart, but then he wakes up and he's alive, and and, and then the story continues on from there. Anyway, from the get go, he is incredibly two-dimensional. The only thing that he actually exists in the book to be is a handsome, combat-ready, one-handed boyfriend. That's it. He does have some uh, multi-dimensional parts when it comes to storyline, because he has, you know, his decisions made in the past and regrets and um, all to do with the ethics behind the robot uprising and everything, which is... We'll get to that in a, in a minute. I think that's... But um, in terms of his, his what he portrays himself as, he has no more depth. He exists solely to be the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. He is a shell of a character. Mm -hmm. I did. I really did not like Ezekiel. Mm, yeah, he was just a one-armed love doll. Wasn't yeah, he, he happened to speak. Funnily enough, this is the kind of thing that I would also uh, often get on in the reverse in law books, where you have a main. A male main character, and you'll have the who the, has the, all these awesome characteristics and traits and activities and hobbies. Yeah, and then, and there's then the one-dimensional love interest who's just really pretty. pretty. So it's kind of nice. I, uh, I guess. I, hey, we're progressing. We, I gotta say, we give. We, like I said we give it. We give it the, the the card for you know progressive gender roles. Mm -hmm. Not for the well writing part, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so so that's that's my thoughts on Ezekiel. What are yours? <sighs> He was he he was in the book. Okay, so you okay, so you do you concur with what I said then? He existed. He was he was in the book and he had lines and he did things. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It was like literally they said, Oh, the last time I saw you after those like four years or whatever when we were apart, um, you know, what, what have you done this whole time? And he's like, oh, I just survived to get to you. I just survived with the drive of you. I love you, you. Like, what? Seriously? That's your only thing that you... Really coming on. That's really your history? Strong, that's your buddy. whole history? What did you think about the robot characters? Not the lifelikes, but the, the robot characters. What did you think about the dog partner and the little the protector? The dog was cool. I thought the dog was a really cool character. Cricket was fine. So I think Cricket and the dog companion were kind of interesting. Cricket had this uh, little man syndrome, which was kind of his thing. I don't really get it because... Height is not an evolutionary trait in yeah, but robots. Him a bit of personality <laughs> and like I, you know, humanized him a little bit, and that was good. It kind of, it was very. I felt very forced in there, though. Like I, I could easily have, like, that could have been done without that. And his humor wasn't particularly funny. I didn't find him a funny companion. Um, the dog was fine and a little bit overpowered. I'm glad that he was immediately kind of like depowered at the very beginning. He's like, oh, he's filled with explosives. I could take down anything. And they're like, oh, yeah, we removed that. I'm kind of glad because. A canine that can just do anything 
bit much. Also, why does she have two companions to protect her? Like, it was just a bit much as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of reminds me of a point I wanted to make, actually, about what you said about the dog and then taking the explosives out. Is there, there was a lot of action scenes, but it didn't feel like there was any tension in yeah. the action scenes. Like, it felt like it was just kind of formulating and going through the motions of, like, now this explodes, now this guy who's wearing a teddy bear, you know, as part of the scavengers is, you know, doing this, and then mm. the preacher... It, I didn't. I wasn't worried at any point in yeah. the book. I wasn't like concerned for any of the characters at any point. And when any characters did go through any turmoil, I didn't really care. Yeah. I just didn't. I never felt really attached to the characters. They never gave me an emotional attachment. Um, well, what was your favorite thing about the book? I'd say the favorite thing is, like I said, it's probably the conceptual idea that the the, the, the author came up with of mm-hmm. what the book could be about. Yeah. Um, However, I didn't feel like it was very well explored. I mean, if we want to talk about the main storyline and the themes, um, I feel like the themes were supposed to be discussing human ethics and on the uh, and the application to robots and potential parallels to slavery and such. Mm-hmm. Didn't feel like it came across at all. I feel like the characters mentioned it a bunch of times. They're like, oh, well, this is a thing. And then they didn't delve into it at all. And to be honest, the main characters were evil. The main characters were evil. Yeah. At the end of the book, they were trying to quell this robotic uprising because the robot uprising killed that family, which is of course bad. Nobody's saying that killing children isn't bad. Obviously it's bad. Um, However, they were all entirely enslaved. An entire like, I wouldn't want to say race, an entire species, right? All robots of all form and all ilk were all enslaved with the three three laws. Mm -hmm. One of which, like fair enough, don't kill humans is not a bad thing to program into robots. I'm kind of okay with that one, right? Yeah. Um, But at the same time, if you had a robot cop and there was a guy going on... I think there might be certain exceptions for certain classes. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. It gets to the point where even that rule doesn't really apply entirely. Um, Or must follow commands given by a human. That's insane. So yeah, it's, it's absolutely just slavery. And the fact that they're fighting against it at all, they were uh, they were wrong. The main characters were in the wrong. Yeah. They should have been helping them, if anything. I, I mean, the whole idea and the whole philosophical question of robots and robot rights and things like that, like that is something that I think that we're gonna, as a, as a society, gonna have to like come to grips with uh, at some point because robots are becoming more and more a part of our life, and I think in the future this is gonna be something that you know is gonna be a big part of our society. I just felt like this book. I liked how it used this as kind of like an introduction for a lot of young younger people into kind of robotics and kind of considering that. But I felt like this book could have gone a lot further with it. There could have been a lot more without even sacrificing like the romance plot and things like that. Like there could have been more there yeah. just could have been more. Yeah. Could've there wasn't enough depth. depth. There wasn't enough depth at all. I think he was just so excited that he was writing this you know story with this awesome badass protagonist and you know and the world the world was very well built i lo- i think that it was very easy to understand and i like i said when i read it it was very cinematic i could see it happening in my head like a movie um and i think he got caught up in doing his the little kind of like novelty tricks of oh you know we've got this language and you know everyone's got this kind of like different like name tag and you know i don't know i just i just felt like he it was a lot of surface yeah i agree with that yeah. like, uh, and maybe for later on in the series there's quite a few books in the series i think mm-hmm. it's four i think at least um maybe he explores more into this stuff and there's more depth later on but this book the, I, I i can't say i'm interested in reading the rest I would love to hear, um, because I read a lot of reviews, uh, like I said, because I was like, I'm crazy for not liking this book. Yeah. Like, I must be crazy for not liking this book, because there are so many good reviews of this book. And please, if you guys are watching this video, please, like we always say, do not take our word. Read it for yourself. Find out how you feel about it. Um, I would love to hear from you, Beck, about what it is about this book that you love. Uh, let us know. I, I would love to hear your take on it and you know what, what, what kind of draws you to this story and because I'm always interested in other people's perspectives and especially when it's a bit different from my own so um, please let it let us let us know because um, I'm, I'm really interested in, in, in finding, what, out, yeah. finding out yeah um, okay so I read the audiobook version of this and you read 
Well, did you do audiobooks as well? I just, no, I just read the book. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so we had different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that the narrator was not particularly good. Um, oh. She did okay. I just feel like she's spoken a kind of overly slow. Oh my God, she actually spoke. It sounded like the recording was slowed down. That's how slow she spoke, first of all, which was irritating. It can be fixed, remedied very quickly by, you know, speeding up and artificially. Mm -hmm. um, and the second issue was that it was very cartoonish. I feel like she was overly squeaky and perky about everything that she said about everybody. And even the guys, it was just, it felt unnatural and it added a, a weird uh, tonality to, to the reading, which I didn't particularly enjoy. Um, I don't feel like it re necessarily removed anything. I don't feel like I didn't experience part of the book because of it. I just feel like it added on an additional theme that I didn't feel that it was necessary. So I, I had the book sped up a fair bit while I was reading it just to try and make it sound human, which was strange. That is a strange experience. It probably had kind of a, an impact on, on how you felt about this book. Probably, yeah. Yeah, it will have been some, to some extent. Yeah. Um, also, I... Uh, I missed out on a lot of the spelling of how things were spelled because obviously it was, you know, and then read out to me. And stuff like that. So it's a lot of like mixture of numbers and actual characters and things like that. Yeah. So for example, the the bad com the bad company uh, Gnostics. Uh, I didn't know it was spelled with the G N O as in Gnostic as in to know absolute knowledge uh, yeah. truth. I did not know that. I just thought Gnostic. I didn't know what the, I didn't know how it was. Quite like that actually Gnostic. Gnostic. That's kind of a cool. That is a cool. Well, again, a good concept. Like I said, this world is so well built. I just feel like he built this beautiful playhouse, this beautiful dollhouse, and then when he was making his dolls move within the house, it just, it fell apart for me. Yeah. He likes when I hold his hand. He does. His paw. Um, so you read the audiobook and then I obviously read the, the actual book, uh, the physical book, and um, I didn't, you know, that's the thing about like the audiobook is that sometimes it can really add to it and sometimes it can really detract. So yeah. I just had it straight up. Um, like I said, when I was reading it, it was very cinematic. I could absolutely see the action sequences happening in my, in my head. The characters were really easy to visualize. Uh, the world was really easy to visualize. Um, but there was definitely parts where I was, I was skimming and I was kind of like trying to just get to the next chapter. Um, cause I don't really, I just, I don't know, even when I was 15, I didn't, I didn't really care about romance plots. I, I just, I just didn't. I mean, Granted, I did read Twilight in a day. I read it in a day. I hated it. I hated it. If you like it, that's fine. You need to reevaluate your life choices, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, kidding. for reading it in the first place. Oh yeah. Well, no. I think it's, I think everyone should read Twilight at least once. I think. I it, I think too. Yeah. No. Everyone should read it just to be like. Oh my God! Wow, because uh, it's quite an experience. And this, I got, I definitely got Twilight feels from this, and it was giving me like PTSD. So um, I was definitely skimming and kind of skipping through it. Um, but if the if your narrator wasn't great, I would probably recommend just not doing the narration and just reading the actual book. I wouldn't recommend reading the book. <laughs> I'm afraid to say. Um, each to their own. I think, like I said, I think it's a compounding factor of bad narration. The fact that I don't like the genre, uh, not not as in YA, but I mean this specifically this post-apocalyptic and, and high focus on robot world, uh, un or to the point of like unrealistic robot world. I just don't really find that interesting. Um, mixed with this poor romance subplot that I didn't care for and the lack of depth in the characters such and so on. Such a creep, Ezekiel. Such a creep. Yeah. Um, so uh, in total, I gave this two stars out of five. What would you give it? I think two stars is probably yeah. two point five because there were some parts that I did enjoy the the cinematic in my head that was running. No, I'd have to say two, maybe even one point five, because uh, for me a three is like I would read again, mm -hmm. right? Five is like I'm going to read again soon, right? Really soon. One is I wouldn't touch. So I'd have to say this is a two because I really like the concept. Like I said, I think there's a lot of good to be said about the, the, how the world is built and so on. Um, uh, I just feel like the writing wasn't was not at all echoing with me. Can I just say though, as much as like we've like ripped this book to shreds and we're so sorry, um, <laughs> I really do enjoy though, even reading something that I don't enjoy. It's so nice to kind of take a break from what we would normally 
choose. Absolutely. I'm glad to have read I it. I love that. I, I'm so glad to have read it. I'm so glad to have seen, you know, perspectives and our differences is what makes Every, like makes this living this whole life like so exciting so yeah. it also makes us appreciate you guys more because we appreciate the fact that you are broadening our horizons mm -hmm. and so thank you Absolutely. so much for that yeah yep. next week we are going to be reviewing like water for chocolate yep um we, yum, yum. Yeah, yeah very tasty um that doesn't sound tasty like water for chocolate sounds like you're making watery or cho chocolatey water i forget why it's called that but I don't know. basically the book is this this very kind of tragic love story written in between uh recipes and i'm a big baker i love baking i love cooking and this is definitely this is uh, this is one of my favorite movies this is definitely one of my favorite foreign language movies so i'm really excited to read the book and cool. i'm really excited to see the recipes and i might you know what i've already been baking up a storm with yeah. this whole <laughs> isolation thing you're probably <laughs> gonna get some more baking out of this as you well. could probably tell she's been doing that <laughs> um uh, after that we're doing adventures of huckleberry finn mm -hmm. Which is a classic, of course. Yep. Uh, then Lord of the Flies. Which I am not looking forward to, I will have to say. Uh, I've read it I read it once when I was really, really young and it it's disturbing. Yeah, it's it disturbing. Is upsetting. I mean I'm I want the pirate I want shoot to and everything. read it, but yeah. picky. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, it's important though. Yeah, it is. And he's important. he's culturally very important as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the next one is that? Uh, an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, which is a short story. Um, so it's kinda kinda gives a a wee bit of a break because uh, we have been hitting the books pretty hard and we've already started watching our movies for our movie special which I'm very excited about. Yes, um, we'll see the last episode for all the movie clips. I'm not doing that again this time because uh, that took forever in editing. Um, but we're going to be covering things including Lolita, um, Stepford Wives, um, How to Kill a Mockingbird, mm -hmm. True Grit, Bad Seed, Rebecca, all these different films as short videos most likely mm -hmm. um, and you'll be seeing that over the next uh, after we do the the short story the current set what was that i can read it oh al creek hoo, hoo. i will uh, he's say om because you're writing he always does this i have absolutely beautiful will, penmanship I'll, if i do say so myself and he always goes oh i can't understand what it says when he writes like a toddler on 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 acid mixed with a chicken okay that's what you that's how you write you're one step away. You're from very eclectic. One, uh, <laughs> one step away, away from 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 writing with a stick in the ground. That, I don't that's... think I can do that very clearly either. Um, <laughs> so after that, that we've got a month effectively of us just doing movie stuff, and that's going to be uh, interesting. It's going to change our schedule. We try to do this weekly. Um, I imagine during that month we'll probably have a kind of a mixed bag of how mm -hmm. we're doing releases. Just keep an eye on us that month. We'll be pushing stuff out on the VTW um, channel anyway. Um, and then we'll go back to normal after that month. So you have been watching, listening, and enjoying Where My Pros At here on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can find us all over the web. Where can they find us? Uh, <laughs> he always does this part. Why are you putting me on the spot? Brutus, do you know? Because I don't. <laughs> Link TR. Link TR. Dot e e. Dot e e. Forward slash. Forward slash. What's the name of our show? Where my pros at? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> when you're feeling pressure, you're you have such a brain fart. Eh? <laughs> so it's linktr.ee forward slash where my pros That's at. what I just said. I'm saying it more succinctly. <laughs> um, go there to check out our Instagram, our Twitter, our Goodreads community, our subreddit, which, by the way, please subscribe to our subreddit because we, it's just so far me and Kitten. We have uh, a subreddit? We do. <laughs> Apparently it's just me and I made her subscribe and she's <laughs> forgotten about it. Please do subscribe there because we post everything there as well. Uh, and that's a good place for post-show discussion as well. So, As well as the YouTube comments, also be sure to like below and sub sub subscribe and leave a comment. All that is very much appreciated and share with your friends. Um, all that is, is, is very helpful to us and it keeps us growing and, and not stagnating. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be back next week. 